Spirit, 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 Spirit. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord, for this gathering tonight, Lord. We ask, Lord, tonight, God, that you would teach us. Teach our spirit, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And God, write your word upon the tablets of our hearts. Lord, let us put aside all the distractions so that we can listen and be touched by your truth. Help us, Lord, to love and obey that truth. Please help us, Lord, your teachers. Uh, hallelujah. Lord, that we would guide and we would teach as you would have us to teach. And Lord, forgive our faults and our sins and hear our prayers. Anoint us with your spirit. Anoint us, God, with your power, the anointing to be a witness for our Lord and Savior, who is in name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 <clears throat> I just, uh, I may have enjoyed our study thus far in Hosea. Yes. Um, so I have, uh, I will be starting another series on Sunday. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be preaching the only Italian I know in the Bible, Malachi. <laughs> That's his name, right? Malachi. No, it's not. Okay, it's Malachi. Um, seriously though, no. um, I uh, I began as uh, as I was looking forward to the series about our relationship with God, uh, and I'm working I'm still working on that particular series as well, but um, I'm gonna start on Sunday morning. I'll be preaching beginning. In Malachi, and I'll give you just kind of a heads up. Um, I'm not sure which title the message will be, but I'll tell you this: uh, that one, one, one title would be, "God is saying, listen, I'm speaking, but not for long. I'm, I'm talking, right, but I'm not going to talk for long." Another one says, "I'm speaking, you might want to listen, so shut up." But there's more to it than that. The whole point is, did you know God still speaks today? Yeah. Now, many times we jump to the idea that, okay, well, this, this is how he speaks. It's still, but, you know, that's not, and it's true. This is it, right? This is the word, amen, the logos. This is the word of God, which is uh, also the bread of life. It's interesting. It's got the same name as Jesus. Amen. Amen. But the idea, though, is this is, in, in many ways, this is just a printed book, but it's not just a printed book. It's a spiritual book. It can only be understood. It can only be interpreted spiritually. Uh, you can break it down. You can use science and all sorts of things. And you'll find some of that in the Bible because um, it's true. But the Bible talks about most of our science as being science falsely so-called. Uh, Jesus said, though, he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And there's only one way to, There's only one way for eternal life. What is that? Jesus. Through him. Amen. He made everything. Without him, there would be nothing. And without him, we can do nothing. Amen? So tonight, uh, we're going to continue in our study in Hosea. We've only got just a, a little bit more in this particular series. Uh, but tonight's, tonight's lesson or message, uh, I'm entitling it, The Truth is in the Mirror. So we're in Hosea chapter 8. I'm going to give you a chance to get there. Hosea chapter 8. Everybody ready? Hosea chapter 8. Father, open our ears that we can hear. Lord, I'm settling my mind right now. Lord, that I will be attentive to your word. May my heart be ready to receive what you'd have me to hear tonight. In Jesus' name. And everybody want the same said? Amen. 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 Set the trumpet to your mouth. Ye shall come like an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. Israel will cry to me, My God, we know you. Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue him. 
They set up kings, but not by me. They made princes, but I did not acknowledge them. From their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves, that they might be cut off. Your calf is rejected, O Samaria. My anger is aroused against them. How long until they attain to innocence? For from Israel is even this. A workman made it, and it is not God. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken to pieces. They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stalk has no bud. It shall never produce meal. If it should produce, aliens would swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now they are among the Gentiles like a vessel in which is no pleasure. For they have gone up to Assyria like a wild donkey alone by itself. Ephraim has hired lovers. Yes, though they have hired among the nations, now I will gather them. And they shall sorrow a little because of the burden of the king of princes. Because Ephraim has made many altars for sin, they have become for him altars for sinning. I have written for him the great things of my Lord, but they were considered a strange thing. For the sacrifices of my offerings, they sacrifice flesh and eat it, but the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity, and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt, for Israel has forgotten his maker and has built temples. Judah also has multiplied fortified cities, but I will send fire upon his cities and it shall devour his palaces. So you read a devotional, maybe maybe something like Bob Hunt, Most Course Highest, or maybe The Daily Bread. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, maybe maybe uh, have you have you seen the one uh, uh, Jesus Walk? It's a 365 days. What's that? I said no, but Sister Linda and I read Morning with Jesus. Yeah, there's another one. Uh, there's there there's Morning and Evening with Oswald Chambers. There is so many that are out there, but you read that you read many things uh, in these devotions, and you'll come across like you maybe you'll read about grace, or maybe you read about marriage, or maybe you may, maybe you read something about gossip, and the first thing that pops in your mind, I know somebody who really needs this. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yes. Yes. Okay. There's the mirror, mirror on the wall. Many, I, I think what happens is that we kind of get confused once in a while because many times instead of using scripture as a mirror, we often use it as a magnifying glass to find out what other people's faults are. And we know in the scripture, Moses, yeah, That's a good one. William's all here. <laughs> He's talking about me. Oh. Uh, but, but, th but think, think about this. So we know what the scripture says about, you know, the, the speck in their eye when you got a two by four in yours playing. I don't know. Mine, mine has been reflecting to me for the last week. Yeah, I think, well, you know, you know I'll slip in there too. Uh, I'll slip just like that, you know, that theater. And you start thinking, I, should be, I know somebody that needs this, right? No, not so much like I need it. Amen. <laughs> so... The idea, though, instead of using it for a magnifying glass, um, quite often we miss the the idea that some of what's being reflected to us, you might be the very one that needs what's been read. Amen. That might be also why why sometimes you're more sensitive in certain areas than others. Okay, Amen. I mean, it, this happened to the people of Israel too. Instead of hearing Hosea and his warning and applying them to their own lives. The Israelites were so accustomed to their own idolatry, to their own traditions, to their own uh, sin, that they regarded God's law as something strange. You know, and it's interesting because I can—I mean, I still today 
hear people and they're saying, well, you know, we're no longer under the law. And they really don't really know what they're talking about. I understand what they what the Bible says about not being under the law and what that implies. But Jesus did not do away. He did not abolish any of the law. So quite, we look at these things and we when the reason the law bothers us is because we're rebels without a cause. I, if I'm going to be a rebel, I'm going to be a rebel with a cause. And that cause Amen. is going to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we look here, and let, let's look at Hosea again. i got to get back to my page here. Hosea and the 8th chapter. And um, verse 11. He says, because Ephraim has made altars for sin, they have become for him altars for sinning. I have written for him the great things of my law, but they were considered strange things. I think we need to get back to the basics. I think we need to come to a place where we start seeking out what, I'll say, the... the uh, well, the premise of holiness. What is premise? The doctrine of holiness. What is holiness? Let me tell you what holiness is. Without it, no one sees God. Without holiness, you won't know. You don't know. You don't see Him. Without holiness, you won't see Him. And you say, well, you know, does that mean I don't make it to heaven? Well, okay. But what I'm talking about is there are so many people today who say, well, you know, uh, where is God when all this thing is going on? What's happening in the world? You know, every I look around every day. And I see God moving. Amen. Uh, for those of you, not everybody could I text late last night, but for those of you who got a message or a text, uh, a young girl who I don't know, but a friend of mine, uh, a, a brother in Christ who attends our church in Battle Creek, had sent me a message. And he only tends to text late at night, you know, if it's work related or certainly if it's a spiritual thing. So this young girl was going in yesterday, last night, for a double lung transplant. Wow. 12-hour surgery. For those of you who were there and you, uh, and you knew about this and you prayed, God bless you. And I'm anticipating that we're going to hear more good news. Amen. What I did hear also is that uh, apparently her lungs were worse than they thought. So this was definitely life-saving. <coughs> Somebody say amen. amen. The idea, though, there's many stop, things stop, that we find there. in the Word of God that is life-saving. Did you hear that? Then here's something for you. Did you know that good doctrine can save your life? Okay. Stop that. We just that prayer. We gotta keep praying that she recovers. Hey, that, we're not done. That's right. That's right. So here, here's what we need to look. At. How many of you realize it's not easy to look in a mirror? Amen. Um, and somebody, one guy told me just the other day. He he said, you know, the more I look in the mirror, the more I look, the more I don't want to look in the mirror. I said, what? He says, because that ain't me looking back. That's my dad. <laughs> and uh, anyway, apparently he loves looking a lot like his dad. And then he took off his hat. He said, see, William, you feeling that? <laughs> so it's not always easy to look in the mirror. To look inward, it's not always easy to face our own sin. Yeah. Focusing on others' negative qualities seems to alleviate some of the anxiety. Uh, you remember, and in, in there was one... one uh, story in, in the book of Luke they're in the synagogue and you got two two people show up in there you got one he's a he's a publican tax collector anyway he's 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 kind of a public not servant but anyway politician he's in there and he he can't hardly look up and he says Lord forgive me a sinner but also in the same place is, is a Pharisee and he says at least I'm not like that guy he talked about all the things that he does, and I'm, I, I'm sure glad I'm not like that guy. The closing statement is, who do you think went away? The one who said he was a sinner. The one who said he was a sinner. Forgive me. Would you work, work on that? Mark on that. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, Lord, forgive me a sinner. Um, I'm so glad that he's still willing to work on me. Amen. My wife will tell you she's glad too. Uh, <laughs> The thing is, is that what we do is we eliminate some of the anxiety about how we see ourselves, especially. See, that this, is, this, this book is a mirror, and we need to see it as that. 
because there's going to be times that when you read the scripture and it's going to speak to you, but there's a side of us that says, well, I know, you know, brother this and sisters that could, we really, could really use this right now. But really, how much more do you need to happen? Because what happens when we start looking at other people's faults without being willing to help them in their way to go, it does eliminate some of the anxiety, but we deceive ourselves into thinking that we're just fine. Brothers and sisters, when, you, when, you're, in a, when you're walking right now, you think, well, you know what, I'm, I'm good enough. No. I'm, I'm, wait, you're never good enough. While, while we're in this world, you're, you're never going to truly be good enough. You go, Pastor, that's kind of a downer right there. What do you mean, not, you know, I can never be good enough? Good enough for what? Of, of your own volition, by your own power, you're never going to be good enough. But of your own volition, you can accept Christ, allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, to lay down your pride, as part of the song, take away my pride. Pride will cause you to deceive yourself. And, and, and then what happens is when the word of God comes, we, it becomes something alien to us. Something that's just, it's just not, well, of course it's alien because it's not in your nature. What did the Terminator say? The Terminator said, it's in your nature to destroy yourselves. You'd have to watch the Arnold Schwarzenegger and Terminator to hear the wisdom of the T-2000. Um, you see, that blame game has been going along. This is not the new, by the way. How many of you want to guess how long this blame game has blame been happening? I don't know the years, but I can tell you from what chapter that we see, and it still continues to this day. In Genesis, in the third chapter. How many of you know this story? Genesis chapter 3. It says here that the man said, that woman who you gave to me, she gave me the tree of the tree and I ate. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. It's not me. The man says, it's not me, it's her. The woman says, it's not me, it's the serpent. But how many of us realize it's still all about us? Of your own, of, of her own volition, did she sin? But you can say out of her ignorance. But that's not an excuse. What's really sad about this story, as the man Adam was right there, the man Adam, who God spoke to personally, laid it out for him, step by step. And the Bible says that with his eyes, being a, listen, with full knowledge that what he was doing was wrong, he went ahead and did it. But then, he wants to blame it on the woman. Now before you think that somebody else needs to hear that tonight, you might want to go back and consider the whole counsel of God's word. We don't have time for that tonight. That's why we study his word every day. We need to full counsel of his living word. And every day we need a little bit here, a little bit there. We need the Holy Spirit to lead us through every step of the way. You know, and, and, and some of us can admit that when the Holy, the Holy Spirit prompts you, quickens you not to do something, don't. But likewise, when he prompts you and he quickens you to do something, then do it. Especially when it's something that it's in the Word of God and it makes sense according to the Word of God. It, it aligns with that. And once in a while, it, it's probably good to call and say, you know, hey, uh, is this me or is this, is this really God? How many of you remember the four keys for hearing God's voice? Stillness, Stillness vision, right? Start, yeah, to, to start moving in the Spirit, tune the flow, and then start writing it down. And lastly, take what you wrote down and say, hey, is this God or is this me? My point is, the Holy Spirit speaking. God is still speaking today. Amen. But when He speaks, whether it's whether you get a counsel through His written Word, Amen, through the Word of God, through the Bible, the, the question is, um, are you deceiving yourself? First, in, in James chapter one, beginning in verse twenty-two, it says, "But be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves." 
For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man, oh, here it is, observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, he goes away, and he imme immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. But here it comes. He who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful. That's it. Did you hear that? He's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. <clears throat> did, you, did you hear what, what he's saying? You cannot be a forgetful person, forgetting what you've heard, forgetting what you've read. But not only that, and do you know the reason most of us forget? Because we, we fail to do it. And we, you know, we as we as we age, I guess, and sometimes you, some of us are just too busy. Um, someone might tell you to go do something, and you have good intentions. Of, okay, then something else happens. You get distracted, yeah. and you walk away, and you forget. <laughs> and I know it really had to be. A, they wouldn't have told me to do this unless it. I can't go back and ask them what, because it's a big way. Humble yourself and go ask. Set aside your pride. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that's someone we're talking about is you. Anybody else besides me know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You, you had your mind set to go do something, got distracted, and in front, you know, some, some are not as busy. I, I understand, and some, some of you will get the. Some are not as busy as I might be, but some of you are no way. You're nowhere near as busy, but you still can't seem to keep things straight. Get yourself a paper and pen. Make listen. Make it your business to remind yourself to do what has been written. Watch this. Well, what, what's he say what, in regard to hearing God's word? You want to write it down so that one that reads it can... Did you get that? Write yourself a note. Part of the reason, part of the reason that I can remember anything that I remember from Scripture is not because I practice memorization as most would practice memorization. It's because I put it into application. As soon as I put it into application, it becomes memory to me. I don't have time to get into it, but if Brother Mike was here, he would tell you um, when he's got his guitar in his hand, he can sing songs. When he takes a guitar and hangs it up, he can't remember the words. Did you know that? One would call, some would call that muscle memory. It's just, it, and, it, and sometimes it's like this. When I've got the Bible in my hand, it's as if this, there's a connection. As if somewhere there's a cable that just plugged into me and it, and I can seem to remember it better, but if I leave my, my Bible on the desk and I step up, what you guys didn't know is last, last Sunday when I was preaching, there were three pages of my message missing. <laughs> Thank God for the Bible. Because I, I, afterwards I said to Brother Mike, uh, you think I missed anything? He said, you didn't miss anything in the bulletin. But there's a reason, though, that I was able to remember it. Because I, I laid my hand on my Bible. <laughs> now you might say, that's silly. No, it, it's not silly. But it doesn't work for everybody just to lay your hand on the Bible. And it doesn't always work for me. All I can tell you is I thank God for him bringing to my remembrance right. at that moment. That was a real application. He brought to my remembrance the things that I, wait a minute, I, Lord, I don't want to stand here and look like a fool. And God says, yeah, I don't want you to look like a fool either. Because yeah. <laughs> you look like a fool, I'll look like a fool. That's not true, but um, God, how, how many know God's no fool? Amen. Right. My, point, my, point, my point is this. You want, how many you want to witness for Jesus? You, wait, I'll bring it back up a minute. How many want you want to have loved ones come to Christ? Amen. You might want to come to Christ yourself. The way he wants you. You might, want to, you might want to realize what's going on in your life and how much when we read the scripture and how much does my, the, my life really glorify God. I wrestle with this on a regular basis. Every day. And I thank God for some of the people that come in. I might be, I may be just absolutely wrestling a problem down someplace, someone out of my my job out in the world. 
and I'm, and I'm starting to pray over it because I'm thinking, man, i got better things to do with my life. And then somebody will come along, and I'm, I'm still working on the problem. They'll come along and say, they'll say this, I hope it doesn't bother you that I talk to you while you work. Oh. <laughs> I said, carry on. And they, they talk, and we talk, and before you know it, he walks away, and he, this happened today, he walks away from us, he says, Pastor, I'm sure glad we had this conversation. Now, i got to tell you, I don't know which one he was talking to, because <laughs> I, I may have to ask him tomorrow, what, what did we talk about? Here's the thing. Re listen to what the Word of God is saying. Right now, this is God speaking. Maybe my voice, this is God speaking. Right here. It says, do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourself. Do not merely go and read your, uh, what's this one here? Oh, my utmost for his highest. Read your daily bread. And then don't do what it says. Don't merely read the word and not do what it says. Amen. Because the Bible says that anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, he goes away and he immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently, say that word with me, intently. You didn't just read it over. I, I can, I, listen, I, I already know. I mean, I, I can still remember myself. I caught myself doing this years ago. You know, I, I got to read the assignment, you know. It's like I was given this assignment. It was a church thing, right? I, I got my daily devotion. I'm supposed to write a note down, and, and I realized it's nobody's keeping score. <laughs> What I realized when I didn't do that, I really was missing something. Then I realized, wait a minute. Not only do I need to read it, but I need to read it with intention. I need to read it inten intentionally and, and intently as if I'm going to do what it tells me to do. Suddenly I realized God might be speaking to me in these words. God might be speaking to me in these circumstances. God might be speaking to me in different situations. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks his, looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whosoever looks intently into the perfect law and gives freedom. Listen, that law gives freedom. And, it, and they continue in it. Not forgetting what they heard by doing what is said. Not forgetting what they heard, but doing it. Here's what it says. If you hear it and do it, are you ready for this? You will be blessed. Amen. You hear it, you do it. Can anybody besides me say, you know, I have missed out on a lot of blessings. Yeah. Because I read it, didn't do it. Yeah. Or I read it, and I delayed doing it. And I regret not doing what the Spirit had prompted me to do. You see, being in Christ gives us freedom. But that freedom is to run from sin. Amen? That freedom is to run from sin and embrace the truth that is in the mirror. Do not merely listen to the word. Do what it says. Sister, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a comment. The song, Listen to Our Hearts. Yes. What if God sings that to you? What would those words sound like? God is saying to us right now, would you listen to our heart? Would you, would you listen to my spirit sing? It's like those songs that we sing where he sings over me and I'm unaware. I want the blessings. Of, I want those blessings. Well, you know, all you got to do is believe, name it and claim it. Hold on. There's a lot to that. But the thing that's missing in most cases is the fact there's a lot for us to do. It's not salvation by works, but it's works because of salvation. It is for freedom you've been set free. And what are we free to do? 
We're free now to, to depart from <coughs> sin, to turn away from sin, to run away from sin, to flee the very appearance of sin, and give glory all to God. Maybe you've got stronger will than I've got. I don't know. But if it's your willpower that's keeping you from sinning and it's not God, it's your willpower. But I have to tell you that I don't have that kind of willpower. Like Jesus said, apart from him, I can't do anything good. But with him, my wife loves this. And I'm still not sure what to make of it when she says that's one of her favorite verses. She says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Amen? Amen. I wonder if that's how she stayed married to me these 45 years. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, don't act like you know me. <laughs> how many of you understand what, what we're being told tonight about the truth that's in the mirror? Before you start thinking about this is, this is good for someone else, and it might be, apply it to yourself. See if he'll not pour out a blessing for you. Or how about this? How about see if he won't pour you out as a blessing? Amen. Let's all stand and go to the Lord of Prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. Your word that is at times so simple. Sometimes it seems too simple. And sometimes it seems so clear. Other times I wrestle with it. But God, we have seen you move in so many ways. How can we deny such a great salvation? Lord, help us to be mindful of what we've read in your holy word. Be mindful of the example that we're setting for those whom we love, for those who we really have a desire to see them come to Christ. Lord, I pray, Father, for our children, for our children's children. Lord, I also pray for us tonight. But God, that's you who have begun to work in us. Could finish it. Lord, I know that nothing is impossible with you, but it's impossible when we're unwilling to turn from sin. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, move in our lives. Convict us, prompt us, move us into the loving light of our Savior. Father, we pray, Lord, tonight for those who are ailing. And Lord, we thank you, God, for the, the uh, praise reports that we've seen, Lord. But sister, our sister who's back here with us tonight, God, we pray for those who have not been able to be here because of illness or other physical impedances. We pray, God, we give you thanks for those who have gone through some hardship and right now, God, they're, they're on a road to recovery. For this young girl who now has new lungs. A new opportunity, Lord, to live life to the fullest. As I think about her and others like her who have gone through such traumatic experiences. Lord, I think about how it is that we've been given a new lease on life. And Lord, we thank you that you hold the deed. You hold the deed to our hearts and you provide for us and direct us in the path that we should go. And I thank you, God, that you go with us. Go with us tonight, Father, as... Uh, as we depart, but also be with us tonight, Lord, as we discuss the questions that are at hand tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.